Hey guys, um, today's video is kind of impromptu, I guess you could call it. Uh, wasn't planning on talking about this subject, but my dad suggested that I journal about it because he says that I have a pretty unique perspective on what's going on right now. And I worried that if I journal, I'll just like lose it eventually. I don't know. Maybe I still will, but <clears throat> I thought I would talk about what it's like to be nine months pregnant in the middle of a big health scare. Um, it's, it hadn't even really struck me until yesterday, I don't think. And I mean, yesterday was just a rough day. Anyways, I was very hormonal crying for no reason. Um, haven't had too many days like that. And just a hard day all around. And I realized, oh my God, we're in the middle of people self-quarantining and people canceling events, um, you know, certain places closing down, <clears throat> a lot of events being canceled. Um, and it's like leaning towards just sort of everything being shut down right now. I know San Francisco is doing like a full quarantine where you can only leave your home for groceries and medical reasons. Um, so that's been crazy, but it like dawned on me yesterday that I'm about to have a baby in two weeks. Um, I already filmed two weeks worth of videos, which I had up, but I'm going to push them out to next week and the week after and put this one up <clears throat> for this week's because it's very current. Um, but in one of them, I tell you guys that I am going to be delivering around the 31st of March. Um, as I've mentioned to you guys before, I've had some blood pressure issues. Um, it's still been good, but it's gotten a little bit on the higher end again. And I don't think they want to risk the baby going to full term and then his heart rate being affected if my blood pressure were to spike at that point. So they're going to induce around the 31st if I haven't gone into labor before then. And that is two weeks from today, which is really exciting. And I'm so ready for him to be here. I'm so exhausted and I had a great pregnancy and I'm, I know I'll miss being pregnant, but right now it's <laughs> really hard physically and emotionally. So right now I'm just like ready for him to be here. But in yesterday, I like, I'm going to get like teary eyed thinking about it. And it's, I don't want this to sound selfish at all because I am very aware of how serious this illness is, especially for people in certain age brackets and with immunodeficiencies. I like am fully aware of this and that is more important than anything. And the health of me and my baby is more important than how this experience is going to go um, or any silly, you know, thing that I talk about in this video. But from a point of view of a nine month pregnant woman, <laughs> like who's about to go into labor in two weeks or less, it's, it's a downer. Like, um, I hate to sound like it's about me. It's not about me. But when you're looking forward to such a wonderful experience and having the baby and then being able to have, I'm going to touch my nose right now. I'm sorry. <sighs> being able to have like family come and visit and meet the baby and it just be this wonderful special time and now we're in the middle of a pandemic like it's not going to happen the way I envisioned it and that sucks I mean it's just a fact of life that sucks um it's going to be fine I've already thought it through planned it through logistically whatever I think the hardest parts for me is that there's a lot of people who really wanted to come to the hospital who um aren't going to come for smart reasons. I don't blame them at all. I, I support them not coming because if they're worried about catching it or they're worried that maybe they've been around somebody or something, obviously you don't need to come to the hospital. Um, but it's sad that I've got people that can't come or that won't be able to come or that are choosing not to come for the safety of them and their families. And I get that, <clears throat> but it's like, it shrunk this big experience that I was so ready to share with so many people down. And it's scary to think, like, what if something were to happen? What if um, I were to get exposed by it? 
uh, or exposed to the virus somehow. Now, I work from home, so I've been at home mostly, but I go out and grocery shop and stuff. And it's like, what if something happens and then my baby is born and one of us has it? Or what if my husband gets it? Or, you know, just stuff like that is so, it's stresses that I can't think about. Like, I, I just can't think about it because it's going to drive me crazy and it's going to drive my blood pressure up. And I just started having a little baby contraction right now thinking about it. <laughs> um, I'm having Braxton Hicks contractions, which if you don't know, are like practice contractions where I'm not in labor right now, but my stomach will still like cramp up real tight and um, kind of start preparing the baby and my body for the birth. <sighs> So I get those occasionally through the day. They're not bad. Um, <clears throat> oh, my nose is starting to run. I don't think I have a tissue nearby. Um, but yeah, it's just hard to think about the fact that I've got so many visitors that I wanted to come and be a part of this amazing experience that just won't be able to. Um, I've got my godsons who are so close to us. They're like second, they're like our surrogate kids and have been for five years and they won't be able to come to the hospital because children are not allowed to come excuse me as visitors and I fully support that because kids carry stuff like nobody's business um but it's sad that like I won't get the experience of them coming to the hospital to meet their cousin like a normal hospital experience is not what I'm going to be getting um I'm sure it's going to be great I'm sure that when I'm in labor, it's going to be the last thing that I'm thinking about is who's coming to visit. Um, the other thing was, and this first part doesn't bother me at all, but like, um, during labor at my hospital, it was when you're in labor, I believe, or not in active labor, like when you're there, like, and things are just sort of slow and you're waiting for labor to really kick in. I think they said you could have like up to five people in the room. So visitors could come in and out, you know, as you're just kind of laying in bed and your contractions are getting closer together and maybe you're on an epidural so you're not really feeling that much pain. There's a lot of waiting time. You can have up to five visitors come. Um, that's cut down to one, uh, both parents and one person, which is fine because that's all I had planned to be in the room anyways. Um, was my husband and then like a support person for him, kind of like one of our very close friends just to be there as like a backup if we need anything, if she has to go in and out, whatever. Um, and then after, and then they say no visitors until after the baby comes, I believe. And then at that point, it's one visitor at a time. Um, each visitor, I believe they said, is going through a screening, which is awesome. Um, if they have any like cough, you know, fever, anything like that, they're not going to come up. They're not going to be allowed to come up, which is obviously the smartest thing to do for me and my baby <clears throat> at such a vulnerable health time. Um, but we can have as many visitors as we want. They just have to ta like tag team in and out. And again, that's like, I'm fine with that. It sucks that all the grandparents won't be able to be in the room at the same time and enjoy you know, the fact like, hey, we've all, we all have this grandbaby now, whatever. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know what, maybe it'll be a little less stressful to have just one person at a time filter in and out than like a lot of people in the room after everything we've been through. So that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's just, it's not how I expected it. It's not what I had built up in my head for it to be. And not that this birth has to go any certain way. It could go a totally different way than I ever expected it to go. Um, you know, I might have to have a C-section for some reason, and that's fine. Like, whatever happens is going to happen as long as I'm healthy and I have a healthy baby. Like, that's all I care about. Um, I don't really care about my health, but for his sake, you know, me being healthy is important. Um, so I'm so excited to have him but at the same time it's like it's stressful it's a downer um I feel like everybody's going to be coming in in hazmat suits or something and um the other thing too that's comforting to me um a the hospital that I'll be giving birth in is a separate hospital from the main hospital 
Um, it's like a women's and children's hospital where it's like the entire floor that I'm on, there's a floor for only deliveries. That's it. There's nobody else coming in and off that on and off that floor. And then there's a floor entire for postpartum. So nobody else is like, you know, no other sick patients, surgical, anything like that. Like that's what that floor is for. Um, the whole building itself is basically like OBGYN stuff. So it's not emergency room patients. It's not patients there to see a doctor. It's not sick patients. It's like mostly planned surgical stuff that goes on there. So that's really comforting. And then today as well, um, I got a call because tomorrow I have an ultrasound and appointment. I have one like every Wednesday and they called to verify. They said, um, we're cutting back on visitors coming in and out for your doctor's appointments, like people coming to see the ultrasound with you. Um, and they said, you know, um, no children are allowed at the doctor's office anymore. You're allowed to have one adult come with you for, you know, support or for the ultrasound or whatever. So my husband can come. Um, and then they asked me, have you had any cough or fever? And I have not. Um, have you been exposed to anyone that is suspected or confirmed to have the coronavirus? And as far as I know, I have not. Um, so they said, okay, you're good. We'll see you at your appointment tomorrow. And then my friend who goes to the same office for just, you know, exams, she said they canceled hers completely. So like they like postponed her appointment, um, probably like a month or something out. I don't know, but like it's basically they're only taking patients right now that they have to take. So like pregnant patients that have to get ultrasounds or like me who have high blood pressure and they have to get checked every week. Um, so that's good to know too. I mean, and every time I've been to that office, there's been a lot of kids, which has never bothered me. I, I love kids, but it's a, it's an office where people have had kids and, you know, like people bring their brand new babies and stuff like that. So they're cutting that down, which is good because like when I was there the past two weeks, I'd see a little kid and it was like, all of a sudden it made me nervous that this kid was carrying something. And I'm like, can you not like, but you know, it's normal to take your kid with you to your doctor's appointment. Of course they would. So that's good to know that on the front end at the doctor's office, they're already cutting back. And then on the back end of the hospital, they're doing what they need to do to keep the baby safe, the patient safe, everything like that. It's like everything that can be done is being done. Everything that is being changed is fine. We'll work around it. You know what I mean? Like my godsons, what I was saying about it sucks they can't come to the hospital. Well, you know what? When we get home and we settle in, they'll come over and meet their cousin then. Like that's the worst thing that's going to happen. Um, it's going to be fine. Uh, it's just a damper, I guess, on what should be a, a just joyful experience and happy experience is going to have this cloud of, oh my God, did you wash your hands? Oh my God, you just coughed in the room with my baby. You know what I mean? Like that sort of like paranoia is going to like overtake it, I feel. And I'm not a paranoid person at all. I've been washing my hands. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do besides all the touching of my face that you guys can see, but I'm sorry. I have really bad sinuses and I'm always touching my nose, but I've been, you know, as clean as I possibly can be. My husband has done the same, um, you know, spraying with Lysol wherever we can, whatever, avoiding people, avoiding big crowds, anything like that. We've taken all the precautions we can. That's all we can do. Like, I'm that kind of person. That's all I can do. I don't want to catch it, obviously. Um, if I catch it, I'm quarantining. Like, that's all I can do. Um, but once you're in such an exhausted state of mind of having a baby, being in the hospital, recovering, and then the innate, I have to protect this baby and help this baby, and then the worry of, what if I have something and I'm breastfeeding this baby or breathing around this baby? Or what if somebody else comes in breathing around this baby? And they, like the thought of that panic setting in, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. Um, in the state of exhaustion, I'll probably be in. So that's going to be a little bit of a damper as well. But I'll get through it. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it is. I have no reason to think it's not going to be fine. Like I haven't been around any, everybody. Um, my work has been great. Uh, most of the people at my work are working from home to be cautious. Like, you know, we're all being as smart as we can about it and it's going to work out. It's just 
not how I planned my first childbirth <laughs> experience at all <laughs> around a freaking pandemic. <laughs> but at least he'll have a cool story to tell, I guess, when he grows up that he, like, I was born in the coronavirus pandemic and I'm so cool and I survived it and whatever. Who knows? Um, and then my neighbor joked today that I could, <laughs> she said, well, when he grows up, if he gives you any lip, you can just say, do you know what I've been through with the coronavirus to have you? Like, not that I've gone through anything, but that was pretty funny. Like, totally kidding. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my state of mind. That's my worry. Um, and again, I'm doing everything I can do. Like, I'm being as smart as I can. I feel like I'm going to have another contraction. I'm not stressing about it. I know it sounds like I'm stressing about it, but it feels good to talk about it. Um, I've talked about on my page before how important it is to talk about your anxieties and your worries and how much it helps. So um, thank you guys for letting me vent about this for 16 minutes. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I talk too much. <laughs> um, I have two other videos that are coming for you guys in the next two weeks you're probably going to get a little bit of repeated information in both of them because I filmed them in reverse. Next week's video was the last one I filmed. The week after that is the first one that I filmed. I gave information about the induction. Um, I said whatever. I don't, who knows? So there's probably going to be a little bit of repeated information in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, I am glad that I have three weeks worth of videos set out, especially considering I'm going to have a baby in two weeks. Um, so that gives me two weeks to hopefully film and schedule some stuff for you guys. If there is a lapse in videos, you obviously know why, um, I had a baby. <laughs> um, and you can check my Instagram page that I have linked below, um, Haley Sulford's channel. I'll try and update you guys on there and let you know that everything's going okay, you know, whatever. But the worst case I see for this channel is just temporarily switching to a video every other week instead of every week, just depending on how hard it is for me to film um, and do research and stuff like that for the first, I don't know, few weeks or months or whatever. Um, I'm not going to kill myself over it and I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to just pump out crap. You know what I mean? Like I want good content for this page and I want it to continue and I'm really glad it's grown as much as it has so I want to keep that up and yeah so again you'll probably hear that little snippet and then the thing about the induction in the next two videos so sorry about that but at least I have some stuff scheduled out so that's all I have for you guys this week I hope you enjoyed this video I'm sorry that it's more coronavirus shit I'm so sorry I'm so sick of hearing about it <laughs> and here I am talking about it for 20 minutes but what are you going to do? It's what's going on right now. It's topical. I'm sorry. If there's any update on Megan Boswell, um, I don't think it, she went to court. She goes to court until May 8th or something like that. So it'll probably be closer to them. I'll keep up with that case and I'll try and keep you guys updated. Um, cause I think it's pretty interesting to go through a live case like that, like, you know, like real time. Um, so I'll do my best. Um, but again, I'll have a newborn, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, if you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button below. If you want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button. I upload new videos every Wednesday. Uh, if you have any suggestions for true crime or other videos, you can leave those in the comments below. Screwed my whole outro up, whatever. Other than that, I will see you guys next week. Bye.